God has moved on. It's a new work. It's a new time, which is going to require a new mindset. Are y'all with me so far? My God, so turn with me to the book of Acts. I'm going back up. Uh, Sister uh, April, I'm going to back, back up to verse uh, uh, number 40, starting in Acts 2, uh, 40. When you have it, say amen. And the word of God reads, Then Peter, then Peter, then Peter continued preaching for a long time. See, you read that, we get mad if I preach 10 minutes over. That's supposed to make you laugh. That's supposed to make you laugh. I thought about that. I started laughing. Boy, Peter preached for a long time. And strongly, ah, they were, uh, with a little passion, urging the listeners. He says, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Kind of sound like Pastor People, Vontaze. Wanting, wanting it for the people so bad. Wanting you to get it so bad. Oh, my God. He says, save yourselves from this crooked or perverse, put it on your translation, generation. Verse 40 and 41 said, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves, after they got saved, they devoted themselves, they didn't go out and party, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. See, those things are very important, fellowship, reading your Bible, that's part of flipping the pages. You can't, you can't grow. You won't stay devoted. You won't stay committed if you're not reading and if you're not fellowshipping. Yeah. Fellowshipping, like we're doing tonight, gives you strength. Yeah. It will encourage you when you are discouraged. That's why I teach y'all the worst, the worst thing you can do as a believer is when you're going through attack or you are discouraged is to disconnect yourself and go home and feel like, you, I'm going to do this and handle this all by myself. That's just what the enemy wants you to do. When you are discouraged, overwhelmed, or whatever, you go over here to the side and say, look, I'm going to stay home for the next three weeks. I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm not going to answer the phone. I don't want to be around the Christian. I don't want to be around the brothers. That's just what the enemy wants the people of God to do because he understands that whoever is left to themselves, the Bible says, is doomed for destruction. It's a matter of time. Oh, my God. And so they devoted themselves, my God, to fellowshipping and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. That's some cold blooded principles. Teaching, fellowship, sharing, uh, uh, prayer. Uh, and because of that, a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miracles, many miraculous signs, I'm sorry, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Mm, my God, when the spirit is there, it's easy to serve. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. <laughs> they worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47, and all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Enjoying the people, that's what that means, the goodwill. All the benefits of being with the people, they enjoy that. It's benefits with being with your brothers and sisters. Mm, and each day, my God, the Lord, because of everything I just read, my God, and God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Father God, thank you for the few minutes. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As I told us last week, I'm just going to kind of rehearse. This is up on the web page. Also out there on YouTube, you can go hear part one. So this is going to be part two of changing your atmosphere. Oh, my God. I don't know how long God going to keep me on this series, but we need to understand the importance of changing our personal atmosphere as well as the atmosphere on our jobs. Oh, my God. The atmosphere, with, with wherever you at, you have the power to change the atmosphere. Mm. And as I stated last week in my introduction, uh, a, a dynamic atmosphere of a strategic church isn't built by light, lights, sound, or decor, or the or seating arrangements. These things that I told you are very important. However, the atmosphere is created first in the spiritual realm. Spiritual realm. And so God is trying to uh, uh, add to and also recreate. I'm going to go on record and say recreate the atmosphere. Going home for Christ is a good atmosphere. My God, there's good people. There's good worship. Uh, there's good decor. My God, even when we was at 34, 34 to our present. My God, we had a good atmosphere. People came in. They felt welcome. They felt love. Uh, they get to worship God. One of the things I always hear when I was always calling the first time guests, that people love the freedom to be able to worship God. Uh, my God, I think about Sister 
ambulance when they came over because in every place that they have been, people don't have the freedom like God has allowed you to have to be able to stand and worship God, get out your seat, come down here and lay on the altar. My God, a lot of churches do not allow that. A lot of churches don't allow people to worship God at the level that we worship God. So, my God, the atmosphere is set for you. My God, everything about going home for Christ Church. I was telling somebody, I don't know, uh, the, in the foundation class, everything about going home for Christ's vision uh, is it, all for you. It's all to help you. And on the 21st of July, we're going to be casting the vision. We got a lot of things in store. We're going to be recasting the vision, telling many of you all about going home for Christ and what we're about, introducing the department coordinators, also the leadership of the ministry, and so forth, letting you know what we're about and how you can get plugged in to this dynamic atmosphere that we have here at going off of Christ Church. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah. Amen. So atmosphere, atmosphere is very important. Some people cannot handle a dynamic atmosphere. People that wants to do church, people, my God, that just want to go to church to clear their mind, they're coming to an atmosphere like ours on a Sunday and even on a Wednesday, and they be like, oh, uh, because some people used to dead atmosphere. And when the Spirit of God has started moving, we have had several people, my God, that has come to this ministry, my God, and has never experienced my God, the type of atmosphere that going home for Christ gives off, my God, and they loved everything about the church, my God, but they weren't ready for the atmosphere. They weren't ready for what the church is all about, and so they left. Not on a bad note, they said, I'm just not ready. Some people, my God, has been to this church when we was at the old building, never ever felt the spirit of the living God. And they didn't know why they was crying. We didn't deal with that many times at the altar. You, they, I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know what's going on, shaking and everything. And that right there could be, it could be somewhat traumatizing and very scared for, people could be scared of that type of uh, movement of God when the Spirit of God come upon you like that. My God, you might not even have to be worshiping God, but when the presence of the God is in the atmosphere, my God, you could be sitting there, my God, and I promise the Spirit of God to get a hold of you. You ain't even trying to ask God to come in. You just sitting there looking, and for you know it, you're doing stuff that you ain't, used to doing. Uh, so you know it, you got up out your seat and you came down to the altar, you crying and don't know why you crying. That's because the spirit of God didn't hit you. And some people cannot handle that. Some people cannot handle that. I didn't see it happen with my eyes many, many times, especially back in the Greenwood Christmas Center days. Atmosphere is very important. Atmosphere, my God, let me move on, my God. You have to create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come. That's why the Bible says with two or three touch and a agree. See what I'm trying to say? So there has to be agreement. Don't you know two people could be in the same room and the, and the Spirit of God not be there? We can religiously say, my God, with two or three people are gathered in the name, that go Jesus in the midst, my God. But Jesus, on, the Spirit of God only descends on unity, on agreement. So two people can be together, but if we're not in agreement, we're not unified, there's animosity, there's bitterness, come on, there's anger, there's frustration, jealousy, all that stuff, the Spirit of God ain't in that. So many people are thinking that God is there because you come to church. Just because you come to church don't mean the Spirit of God is there. You got to invite the Spirit of God into your atmosphere. Mm, am I helping you so far? And so I talked about last week on point number one, my God, about the open heavens. We need the heavens open. Oh, my God, I need the heavens open. I don't know about you, but I cannot have my worship hitting the ceiling and falling down. I cannot have my coming to the house of the Lord, joining myself with the believers in vain. I cannot have, my God, the heavens closed because I won't release. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God has told me to release. I cannot have the heavens above my head at this season of my life closed because I'm contaminated on the inside. Because I'm full, my God, of, 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 of all that mess on the inside. Anger, uh, sin, this habitual sin, all this stuff. I can't have the heavens closed. I don't know about you, but I need my prayers to be a sweet aroma to the throne of heaven. I need, my God, when I pray, my God, to God to look from over the throne and say, okay, that's my son. I know that one right there. Yeah, yeah, he might have made a mistake, but he quick to forgive. That's one thing I love about David. Oh, uh, my God, David, David, my God, like I said, he cut your head off, my God, and get out on his face and pray and ask God to have mercy on him. He, uh, he kept a repentant heart. Couldn't nobody beat uh, David, King David, from repenting. That was a repentant man. And so if he had to repent often, what makes you think we don't? You know, it's just something, my God, about the, the heavens being open. When the heavens are open above your life, all you got to do is just be walking. All you got to do is just be in the right place at the right time and just favor falls and situations happen, doors open, promotions come, and you're just in the atmosphere. 
Uh, you just have to be in the vicinity, my God. When God begins to bless a person's life, uh, my God, when God begins to begin to, to charge a, 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 a atmosphere, I uh, begin to move, my God, in an atmosphere, all you got to do is just be in the vicinity. You ain't got to be all the way in. You can be on that side of the door. My God, in favor, hit your life. My God, a miracle, hit your life. My God, you ain't got to be, my God, right close, ma'am. You could be on the bottom. Come on, you could be crawling to the bottom of, uh, of his hymn and getting everything you need. It's something about atmosphere. Atmosphere is inviting. Oh, my God, when you and I give off a good aroma, and I ain't always been this person, when you and I give off an inviting atmosphere, when our attitude, my God, invites people, when we give a welcome, welcoming attitude, my God, people want to be around people. People that gives off a sweet aroma. Uh, people want to be around people, my God, that's inviting. People want to be around people that's friendly. Come on, somebody. Because there's a lot of hurting people in the world. People come into church every day, even here tonight, my God. It's hurting, my God. And they're looking for somebody to encourage them. They're looking for somebody to tell them, you can do it, my God. I'm praying for you, my God. Sister, I love you. <laughs> if you need to talk, just call me. Come on, somebody. It's one thing. We need to be more inviting. He said, "You, they will know you are my disciples by the love that you have one for another. Come on, somebody. Somebody. Love creates a good atmosphere. Love, my God, would invite, my God, sinners, my God, into your life. Love, my God, my God, would bring sinners, my God. If God can send sinners, my God, to going off of Christ church because he know we're going to love them no matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like, no matter what they got on, my God. God going to keep people coming in this church. Come on, somebody. Love. It is the most powerful word in our vocabulary. Love. Capital L-O-V-E. Just like capital L-O-R-D. Love and Lord go hand in hand. I said love and Lord go hand in hand. Oh my God, my God. And it's critical for the heavens to be open because you got to line yourself up. You got to be in alignment, alignment, proper alignment with heaven. You got to be in proper alignment, my God, my God, with the word of God. My God, it's critical for the heavens to be open. I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it, my God. For some of us, it feels so tough. It feels like when we pray, we don't get nothing out of it because uh, the heavens might be closed. And so before you get discouraged and quit, let me encourage you. Let me be pastoral. You. Do a self-evaluation. Say, God, Holy Spirit, search me. And when you find something, show me so I can repent and turn from it. Because he's going to find something if you tell him to search you. I, can, you know. I said, he's going to find something if you tell him to search you. I thank God, my God. I thank God for Apostle Darren Lewis. Darren Lewis told me early on when I birthed the ministry, Apostle Darren Lewis, my God, my God. <laughs> Denise, uh, Darren, he told me, he said, I always pray, Pastor People, that the Spirit of God search you. Always pray and ask the Spirit of God to search you. And when he finds something, because he will when he search, repent and turn from it. Some people won't pay that, pray that. That's a dangerous prayer. Because we might not, mm, we might think, we, mm. but anyway, we want the heavens to be open. But go ahead to point number two. I want to move to point two so it's critical that you keep the heavens open. You have a lot to do with the heavens being closed or open in your life. Let me say that before I move to point two. You and I, I and you, have everything. Now, you have a lot to do with the heavens being open. How many of y'all want the heavens open over your life? How many of y'all need something from God? How many of y'all believe in God for something? Okay, so if all of us can raise our hand, then it's important that we make decisions that's going to keep the heavens open. And it ain't that difficult. That what you know to do, do. That what you know you shouldn't do, stop. Because I promise you, when you, when, that you real talk, just like that. Because when you and I begin to walk in, watch me now, I'm trying to shield. But when, when you and I begin to walk in rebellion, I taught y'all that Sunday, or operate in disobedience, whew, the heavens is closed. As I told y'all, when I went off on the homeboy, my God, about how he was uh, disrespected, I had to repent and ask God to forgive me, which would have disqualified me, to me, my God, from preaching to y'all if I had not repented and asked God and him to forgive me, my God, so uh, the heavens could be open when I stand before you. You got to pay a price to stand up here. This ain't easy, baby. I promise you, it ain't easy. That's why so much warfare going on in my life, because it's a real calling on my life. And the enemy is terrified of this. Mm, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah, hey, my God. Mm, I know he is, because lives are being changed, but I need to heavens to be open and so all you gotta do is make decisions that's gonna keep the heavens open that means do those who know to do right and yet choose to do wrong to him it is sin 
Sin, I don't care what nobody have told you. I don't care what church you didn't grow up in. I don't care what society say. Sin will close the heavens. Sin will block the prayers. Sin will hinder the finances. Sin will hinder the healing. Sin will hinder the deliverance. I don't care what nobody told you. You and I cannot practice habitual sin and think that the heavens is going to be open and God going to flood down everything we need. He won't do that. That goes against his nature. That goes again. The Bible does say that he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. He get to bless who he want to bless when he want to bless it. But God's grace and mercy cover you and ask so we can return from and turn to him. So don't use his, life, his grace as a license to practice sin. Use his grace and the mercy to say, Lord, help me change. So point number two. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we started messing with it a little bit and, and, and jabbing at it last Wednesday and, and, and the enemy wanted to set us off. Y'all stay with me. I said we started messing with point two last week, and we started jabbing at it, so the enemy wanted to get in and mess up the microphone, so then we just went harder. When the enemy strike, we strike back. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I write this down. I posted on Facebook, and God spoke to me in my studies today. Uh, uh, if you can kill it in your head, you can kill it in your life. If you can kill it in your head, you can kill it in your life. So I have to kill stuff every day so it don't manifest in my life. Especially if you're recovering alcoholic addicts, you better start killing stuff before you find yourself back in where you thought you. Don't get too full of yourself. Don't get intoxicated because you got a little success. And the heavens is open. And it might not be drug and alcohol, but you know what your thing is. If you can kill it in your mind, you can kill it in your life. Because everything starts in the mind. And so you got to have a number two, point number two, an atmosphere of unified expectancy. They was unified. They was up in the upper room. They was all on one accord in the book of Acts and the day of Pentecost. And the Bible said the spirit of God failed because they was unified. What type of expectancy do you have right now concerning your future? What type of expect, uh, expectation do you have that you came to the house of the Lord? You came, but just because you came don't mean God going to move. You got to position yourself, posture yourself, my God, come on somebody, and you got to begin to raise your level of expectation. Because if God did it for you, you wouldn't be ready for it no way if you don't come with no expectation. God is always moving. He's moving in this setting right now. He's moving in this atmosphere right now. And those that sense it to a spirit will sense God moving. Those that's in the flesh and distracted, death by distraction, go look at it. My God, if you're distracted, your mind is all over the place, God will move and sit right beside you, you won't even know it. Too insensitive, too alive. We got to die. <laughs> Somebody give God a hand. And so we got to have an, a unified expectancy. Watch this. Unified expectancy is anticipating that the greatness of God's will and work will be done. Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works. Watch this. It didn't say in the church it said in us God can do abundantly watch this above all that we think or even ask according to the power that works in us so guess what uh, how much power you got how much power do you got oh my God Peter the oh my God they walked in the book of Acts and they shut people laid people in the shadow and they was healed uh, uh, they laid handkerchiefs down and people was healed power so so according to the power God can do abundantly above all that we think you can't even begin to imagine or even ask even if you ask for it my God I didn't ask for it. God is still able to do it don't you know God can bless you for stuff you never even asked him for stuff can I can I tell uh, abundantly above all I told the class, the foundation class, this, this, this past Sunday, uh, last Sunday, I said, um, and God gave it to me when I was teaching the class, how I'm standing in destiny. When I used Vontez or Dominique, when I said destiny is over her, when I was zigzagging and all that old type of stuff, and, and, and the man of God was over her, uh, uh, and many times I done rode the skate land, uh, tossed on Sunday nights, my God, and many times I done drove past, up and down, and past this church, my God. It was predestined, stay with me, it was predestined in my future, even though I became a gangster, even though I became a drug addict, even though I became a game bag, even though I went to penitentiary twice, it was predestined, Sharon, that I would own, not rent, own 205 South Sheridan one day. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. See, 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 some of y'all missed that. 
even though, even though, come on, come on, Lador, watch me. Even though I became a gangster, I went to prison twice. I did all the stuff that y'all know I did. And I drove past this church all my life when I was little, going to skate land every Sunday night. But it was predestined before I was created that I would own 205 South Sheridan. Or abundantly above all that you think. Abundantly above all that you think. Oh, you I, I would have never thought I would own something. Oh, my God. I, Above what you can even think, Tracy, and even imagine. But if it's part of your, that's why it's critical, my God, to get connected with people that can move you to your destiny. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Get disconnected from people that's going to help you get to your destiny. Or the enemy wants to destroy relationship because people, my God, God will bring people into your life to help you reach your destination. So if you disconnect from the people that God has placed in your life to help you reach your destiny, you hurt yourself. Abundantly above all, the first owner in 67 years to ever buy this church. It was predestined. It was predetermined, my God, before he even thought him, before I was even conceived in my mother's womb, that I'd be standing right here with Billy Joe Darby, Dad Hagen, Dad Osteen, and all the great preachers. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you. Oh, my God, God took a thug and did something miraculous. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So I wonder, I wonder, uh-oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all know here he comes. I wonder how many of you are missing out on greatness because you're bitter. You won't read. You won't pray. You won't stay consistent. You won't submit to your mentors. You won't submit to authority. Uh, and you got a nasty attitude. Don't nobody want to get connected to you. Uh, God said, I brought some of these people over until you, because they, they're going to help you reach your destiny. But if your attitude is not inviting, if you're still too bitter, don't you know bitterness, whatever you squeeze, come out. Everybody has a destiny. That should have helped somebody right there. Don't leave your destiny on the wall. Don't leave your destiny in the corner. Ephesians 3.20 says, abundantly above all that we may think, I even ask. God got great things in store for the people of God. Lauren, God wants to blow your mind. But see, one thing about it though, I know for a fact, my God, there's no way, Joseph, I would have been able to inherit and stand in my destiny today if I'd have been a lukewarm, up and down type Christian. Because when I would have got her, I would have been broken. To the point where I couldn't handle the blessing. But you know, there, there are certain blessings that you got to be ready to handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you get there, you better be make sure you're ready to handle it. Yeah. So that's, but God loves you enough to where he withhold. Yeah. He allows you to wonder 40 more years because you ain't ready. Yeah. He will give you, as the scripture said, according to the power that works on the inside of you. You determine how much power you got. Yeah. Much power, you determine that. Yeah. Little power, you determine that. As they say, much prayer, much power. Okay, okay, I get that. My God, but you and I, you and I determine. So we get to cho choose, and we got to deal with the consequences of our choices. So if I want power, I got to choose to have power. How do I get power? I do those normal things uh, th that we should already do, which is come to church and, and fellowship, pray, fast, apply the word of God, die to ourselves, repent, all of those type of stuff. We should be doing that. That's your reasonable duty. Yeah. Understand this as I move on that the enemy will do everything he can to disconnect you from the very thing you need. Yes. Yes. See, if you can kill it in your mind, you can kill it in your life. Yes. Guess where the enemy start working on a person that he's trying to get to disconnect from a ministry yeah. that God did. Because see, the devil know yeah. that some of your destiny is tied up and God can't take you on to your destiny until you get free. Come so that's why God yeah. brought you to a church like this, a God that don't do church but do Christ and has classes in place for you to get free because God can allow you to possess. God can't allow you to cohabitate with your destiny until you get healthy enough to handle your destiny. And so the enemy, my God, even though you go pastor, go pastor right there, even though the enemy, thank you Holy Ghost, I'm flowing in God. Even though the enemy, my God, the enemy know, my God, there's power over there. There's something over there for you. So, my God, but that's a, see, it looked like it only probably about 15, 20 steps, my God. But that's a whole lot of living. That's a whole lot of choices and decisions. Oh, my God, that's a whole lot of dying along the way. Oh, that's a whole lot of turning away from people, places, and things along the way. That's a whole lot of fasting and praying along the way, my God. That's a whole lot of crying. That's a whole lot of feeling like I, I want to give up and go back, my God. 
oh, nah, that, 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 uh, there's a whole lot of don't nobody love me and everybody hurt me and everybody dropped me. Oh my God. See, that's a whole lot. My God, y'all see I'm moving, but I'm moving through trials. I'm moving through pain. I'm moving through hard. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But my destiny is still right there, baby. See, 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 that even though that's my destiny, I got to pay a price, my God, to reach my destiny. You know, many people want the victory, but they don't want to pay the price to get the victory. Oh, my God. I said many people want the victory, but you don't want to pay the price to get the victory, baby. And so even though our destiny is over there, oh, there's a whole lot of decisions that got to be made. There's a whole lot of, oh, my God, my God, self-sacrifice that got to be made. Uh, there's a whole lot of saying, you know what, I can't go with you tonight, girlfriend. I got to stay home because God got me on a three-day fast. And so I'm going to let you go to the clubs where I fast and I'm going to pray for you while you're at the club. Oh, my God, didn't they have a shootout? God, that's why God told you not to go because they was going to blow up the club and you at home fasting. And you ought to give God the glory that you didn't get killed at night. <laughs> whole lot of destiny. Whole lot of choices, I mean, that's connected. So atmosphere, unity. So the devil, as I stated, will try to get you disconnected from people that you need to be unified with. People that you need in your life that's going to help you reach your potential and help you fulfill your, your future, you're disconnecting them from them. Unified expect expectancy is what they had. They was all on one accord. When the people came together, the Spirit of God failed. Upper room, a dollar twenty. that means 120, was together on one accord. Didn't nobody have no different agendas, man. Yeah. See, I say many of us, my God, is wasting time. Yeah. T.D. Jace was just in there talking, my God, and I was showing Alvin, my God. He was talking about how it took Jacob 14 years to recover something, my God, that he gave up. 14 years. Is it taking you that long to get what's already belonged to you because you keep making the wrong decisions? You keep going back. You keep thinking it's going to be different this time. You keep going back to the familiar. You think that you've been away six months now, okay, I can go back, it's going to be different now. I got some scripture in me now. I got a little bit of words. I can set some boundaries now because so I went just the beginning and so forth. I think I can go back and entertain it. Be better be careful. And so they was unified. Mm. They was unified. Watch this. When, when, when there is unified expectancy, four things begin to happen. Write these down. Four things begin to happen. Number one, salvations begin to take place. Salvations begin to take place. Mm. My God, Mahogany didn't run, I didn't get these to her because God gave it to me and shift me. Sometimes he do that. My God, but I added this. My God, four things begin to take place. The first thing, according to the scripture, it says salvations begin to take place. It says the fellowship of the believers started with 120, y'all. 120 people in the upper room. And in a matter of days, nearly 3,000 more people were added. That's Acts 2.41. Just follow the scripture. It's not hard. 3,000 people was added according to Acts 2.41. Because they had unified expectancy. My God, come on. They had unified expectancy. When you come together, be, come, well, my God, with unified expectancy. Come with an expectation. Be intentional about your coming to the house of the Lord. Be intentional about your reading your Bible in your private time. Be intentional about making a 6 o'clock prayer and stuff like that. So make, be intentional about building an altar in your home. Make your bathtub an altar. Make the stool that you're sitting on in the morning an altar. My God, your car can be an altar. Come on, Sister Johnson. My God, be intentional, my God. Oh, my God, say, meet me in my car as I drive to work, God. Meet me in the bathroom when I run this bubble water right here. Who am I talking to? You got to have an expectancy. And because the people was on one accord, my God, God began to add unified expectancy. I'm hammering it. Unified expectancy. God added 3,000. Number two, miracles begin to happen. Write this down. Miracles. Every person in Jerusalem at Pentecost heard the gospel message spoken in his or her native tongue. The Bible says that 120 people were speaking the same truth in different languages. And the crowds could, on, could not only hear but understand what was being said. I'm going to say that one more time as y'all write. 120 people were speaking the same truth, but they were speaking the same truth, church, in different languages. Sola, and the crowds, thousands and thousands and thousands of people that's in this atmosphere and in this vicinity, and they were speaking, my God, different languages, my God. Uh, uh, the, the truth in different languages, and the crowds could not only hear, but, but, but also understand what was being said. Who does something like that but God? All these different languages, Janice, 120 people there together, speaking truth. Uh-oh, see, truth. See, it's truth, 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 truth. Different people from different parts of the world came together on the day of Pentecost. Get this vision, this visual. 
and they was unified. God said, go up into the upper room and wait. Obedience first, because they did what God told them to do. See, that's it. The Bible says obedience is better than a sacrifice. See, we sacrificed to come to church. We made time to come to church tonight. But they don't stop there. You got to get what you're getting, then go be obedient to it. That's where the blessing come in at. Not because you came to church tonight. Take what you heard and go apply it. That's where the blessing come in. He says obedience is better than you coming to church. Obedience is better than the, fellow, than the believers coming together. That's good, but that ain't, it don't stop right there. Right, right. See, a lot of us stop right here. We come to church and we think we done done something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we ain't got no intention. We ain't expected, my God, to apply nothing. Yeah. We ain't sure they ain't expected to go read nothing. Pastor could be up here telling a bald-faced lie. You would never know because you won't go flip the pages to find out. Come on now. Come on now. See what I say? So, so, so therefore, all the believers was together on one accord. And 120 of them, they went where God told them to go. So they was in obedience, and you had all these different people speaking, rallying around one thing, one word, truth. So all these different people, pleasure to come from all over the world, came together speaking, my God, my God, oh, the same language, because the same language is about truth. If they had been speaking anything other than truth, they would have been confused. And the Bible says that everybody that was there understood everything they said, even though they from all over the world. Truth solidifies. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, everybody can't handle the truth. I want to sit up on a pastor that live what he preach. I want to, I want to go to a church where they were keeping it on the dollar. You know, and when they hear truth, they run from it. That's too hard. Because when Jesus was speaking truth, the first thing the disciples said, this is too hard of a saying. And the Bible says they turned away and left them. Because they said this is too hard to receive is what they were saying. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who was meek and mild, gentle, wasn't his passion, his passion people, but he spoke truth and many of the disciples and said, this is too hard of a sin. Then he went to the 12 and said, would you leave Peter? Because he was rock solid like this pastor said, to whom shall I go? You got the words of eternal life. I can't go nowhere. I ain't got no plan B. These are the words that even though it's hard, even though it's tough, even though he's giving with passion, but he's telling the truth. And I'm going to stay right here because my destiny is tied to the truth that's inside of pastor people. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Hey, somebody give God a hand, baby. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Yeah, 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 miracles, miracles. When there's unified expectancy, miracles take place. Can I tell you, my God, your hand might not be uh, disformed, but if, but if you're no longer, my God, bound up to what, let me tell you something. If you walked in here with the mindset to commit suicide, now you don't want to commit suicide, that's a miracle. If you got hope that you can make it one more day, that's a miracle. If you was getting ready to walk away from God, but you decided to stay with God, that's a miracle. If you was getting ready to do something that you know you weren't supposed to do and you changed and did the right thing, that's a miracle. If you stayed clean and sober one day, that's a miracle. See, we don't think signs, miracles, and wonders work today, but I do. You know why, Toya? Toy, Tanya, because every time I look in the mirror, I see a miracle. Every time I look at some of y'all, I see a miracle. <laughs> oh my God, I said every time I look at some of y'all, I see a miracle. When I think about Justin McGinnis, I see a miracle. Come on, somebody. Oh, I can't think of it. How do you see yourself? What's your image? What's your image? What's your image? Image is reflection. Image is reflection. My God, there was a time when I looked in the mirror, I started crying. I don't cry like that no more. It's a different type of cry. It's a cry of thanksgiving now. It's a cry of saying, God, I thank you that I ain't looking like I used to be. Are you still crying? Are you still crying over spilled milk? Because you're not being transformed from the inside out. It's enough for miracles, miracles, but every one of y'all are miracle. Stephanie, you're a miracle. Shay, the stuff you've been through, girl, since you came into this church's life, oh my God, you're a miracle. You didn't caught the bus to church. You didn't walk in the snow. You didn't, you, my God, you didn't walk in the rain. <laughs> oh, my God, you didn't slept in your car. You didn't live in abandoned houses and all that stuff. My God, your testimony, just like your pastor. You're a miracle, God. I can't get nobody to say that right there. Hey, Jesus. If you look at your circumstances, your situation, hey, how you standing, Tedrick? How you standing, my God? You should have lost your mind, but Christ gave you his. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I should have lost my mind, but God gave me his. It's hard to receive when you're bitter. <laughs> I'm looking at some of them. It's all good, man. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel, baby. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, because I got to reach my destiny. <laughs> uh, just because I'm standing, it don't mean I quit. <laughs> I got to stay hungry. I got to keep a Matthew 5 or 6, baby. Blessed is the man who hungry and thirsts after right. Some of you not hungry no more. I said, some of you not hungry no more. You got to stay hungry if you're going to reach your destiny, baby. You got to stay hungry if the heavens going to stay open. You got to stay hungry if you're going to posture yourself to receive a miracle from God. You got to stay hungry. And so God is still doing miracles. Yeah, 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 yeah. The third thing, my God, restoration begin to manifest. Write that down. Oh, God begin to restore something. When there's, when there's unified, my God, expectancy, uh, um, a restoration begin to take place. People, my God, that the enemy trying to pick off begin to come back and say, what must I do to get back connected? I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, God begin to restore. Can I help you understand something? One of the highest orders in God's kingdom is restoration. God wants to restore the people back. That's where Jesus came from. My God, to restore, to redeem mankind back from the curse of the world. God wants to restore you. It's the devil's will. Oh my God, to dis disconnect and destroy relationships. Because let me tell you something. I was telling the brother this the other day in the gym, Monday in the weight room. I said, don't you know just like money is the currency in the natural? Guess what the currency is in the kingdom? Relationships. Just like money make the world go around in the natural. Relationships make the world go around in God's kingdom. That's why Romans say don't conform to the pattern. See, the pattern tell you leave them alone. Leave them alone. They hurt you, stay away from them. If somebody back talk about you, quit talking to them. See, that's what the world wants you to do. But in God's kingdom, God said, I'll use that situation to teach you how to be long-suffering. To teach you how to love the unlovable. <laughs> because God understands the power, oh my God, of relationship. Because God needs you and I to advance his kingdom. And so, therefore, if the relationships are broken, then we can't move the kingdom forward. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven, Patrice, is, is, is forcefully advancing. And so, therefore, it takes two to advance God's kingdom. When he sent the disciples out, he sent them out by two. He never sent them out by one. And so, if I go out by myself, I got some power, but I ain't got all power. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It takes two people to have all power. And really, when you go out by two, you really got three because the power of God lives on the inside. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. So it's really, my God, you, my God, you, the Father, and the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Yeah, yeah. And so you got to be careful about allowing people to disrupt, my God, and disconnect from you that ain't supposed to. That's why you got to be sensitive. Because we would clip somebody, yeah, clip, 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 but we're clipping the wrong people. See, if you don't be careful, my God, you've been pruned something that wasn't supposed to be pruned. You've been clipped something that wasn't supposed to be clipped. You've been said, I don't need the church no more and get away from the church. Before you know it, six months later, you're in full-blown sin because you clipped yourself and removed yourself too soon. Ah, some of y'all, when you graduate the, when you graduate just the beginning, you need to keep, keep coming back like you're still in the program because you ain't ready like you think you is. Come on, somebody. And if you stay connected, you have power. If you disconnect too soon and think you ain't got to come back, before you know it, you're going to be right back in trouble. Tell me, Janice, can you come down and visit me? How to get back in trouble? Or uh, don't clip too soon. Don't disconnect too soon. Many people are disconnected and died. Many people are disconnected shipwrecked by God because they thought they were somewhere when they really wasn't there. I can't get nobody I said they thought they were somewhere and they really wasn't there. The enemy, my God, that works kind of to because he would use people in the church and outside the church to get next to you because he's trying to pick you off. Be careful what you join with. Everything ain't Jesus. Everything ain't glory to Jesus. When you say glory to Jesus, you say, now give me discernment for glory to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. I'm going to get y'all out of here. My God. And so, 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 a man destined to sit outside the temple. Let's look at this. Oh, let's look at this. Real quick, a man destined to sit outside the temple gates. We're talking about restoration because they was all on one accord. They had, the atmosphere was, uh, was one of expectancy. The Bible says that a man destined to sit outside the temple gates begging for his welfare was immediately restored to full health and leaped and ran. That's Acts 3, 1 through 10. I'm going to read this. Acts 3, it says, Peter and John went to the temple church one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried, carried in each day. He was put, he was put, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When, they, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, see? They looked at him focused. They was focused on him. That's another thing. You got to be merciful. Here's the man. Come on, Brian. Sitting right here. 
Peter and John going to the temple. This man been sitting there. He crippled. He ain't got nothing. He's begging. But they look at him. Some of y'all, y'all know, y'all see that? But they looked intently. Thank God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. He puts my watch on so I can watch time. Thank God this man, even though he was crippled, even though he was begging, what I like about the story, and God just gave this to me, Amber, is that it was something about his self-esteem and self-confidence. Because even though his legs were active, what activated, the Bible says that Peter and John looked at him intently. They looked at him. Instead of him doing this, and he looked right back at him, oh expecting yeah. to receive some money, but that day he received his healing. Oh, yeah. See, some of you, my God, God wants to bless you, so God will bring people across your life Hallelujah. and across your path. Instead of you shaking them, their hand with a firm grip and looking them in the eye, you will grab their hand, men. See, one thing about people that got long money and old money and oil money, my God. See, see, one thing about a firm handshake, and you look a man in the eye, it tells another man, my God, that's a hard worker and worked hard for what he got, it tells him something about you. But when they shake your hand and you greet it, you grab it, and you don't shake it with strength, and you looking all down, it shows a lack of confidence. You're not sure of yourself. Oh, my God, you can be scared to death, but when you walk in a room, a bunch of dignitaries, you walk in, they say, hey, how you doing? My name is Lawrence Peoples. How you doing? God bless you, man of God. Trembling in my soul, but I'm standing outwardly with confidence. And so, and so, and so, he looked. Go ahead, son. So he looked. So the man of God looked. Go ahead, brother Brian. He looked, and he looked intently, and they looked at him. They showed mercy. They could have just walked past him. Some of y'all walking past people to God that you got the power to heal. I said, some of y'all walking past people that you got the power. My God, just say the word, they should live. My God, just say the word, they should be healed. Come on, just say the word, they shall. Come on, somebody. Quit walking past people because you ain't got no mercy because you ain't because you worried about your foe and no more. Come on, somebody. But they just got through doing a miracle, my God, and the Spirit of God just fell, and they on their way to the temple, my God, to pray. They, 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 they was in order. They was in their season. They was in their spot. They was doing what they do. The Spirit of God has failed. God had added 3,000 people, Christian, to the church. They weren't intoxicated behind the gulf. They went right back to church. They was on their way to church, my God, and on their way to church, they did a miracle. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, some of you, you get your miracle and you quit coming. Oh, I go next week. <laughs> oh, I go, I got two weeks. Now I come back, you know what I'm saying? See, see, see. You get a miracle and you, and you lose your passion. You lose your tenacity. You lose your focus. You put your Bible down. You put your Bible down. Do you know when you put your Bible down, you're putting down power? When you pick your Bible up, you put power on the inside of you. Uh, the power that woke it on the inside. So when you don't read, you ain't got no power. When you put your Bible down, you ain't got no power. When you let stuff distract you from reading, you ain't got no power. And you're going to need that power to resist the lust of the flesh. You're going to need that power to say no to the flesh. You're going to need that power that you keep pushing to the side to resist the temptation. Oh, my God, God's trying to get you to eat that power. Ah, eat that power because you're going to need that power to resist this thing called life. Save yourself. Save yourself, Peter told him, from this, 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 this world. Quit, 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 quit pushing your power away. And then cry when you're defeated. Quit, 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 quit going to challenge, eating up your power. Meaning that you don't give God what belongs to him financially. Because you need to get them shoes, you got to get that hair, you got to get your nails, you got to get your suit, you got to get your tennis shoe, but you're eating up your power. Quit eating up your power. Some of y'all, God say, my God, don't go eat, go home and read, and you're like, that wasn't God. <laughs> you know why? Because King stomach, King stomach is cold. I've been in church, I said, we justified, I just left out of church. Pastor just preached a cold word, and the Spirit of God just said, I know you're not telling me to go. Yes, Do it all the time. God trying to give you some more power because you're going to need it on Monday, but you just ate it up on Sunday. I said, God trying to give you some more power because you're going to need that extra power on Monday, but you just ate it up out of disobedience on Sunday. Oh, my God. Let me hear them get this out the way. I'm trying to help. Somebody give God a hand. And so when there's unified expectancy, y'all, miracles take place. People that's lame begin to walk. People that's blind begin to see. 
And from there, the fourth thing, abundance of supply begin to manifest. Where there's unity, there is no lack. When there's unity, there is no lack. Listen to this. Everyone sacrificed and gave to each other so that no one had a need that went unmet. An extraordinary unity saturated the church atmosphere, y'all. All believers was together and had all things in common. All believers were together and had everything in common. The atmosphere was right. Can I help you understand something? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes, y'all look at me because I don't want y'all to miss this revelation. God just brought it, showed me. Sometimes God will trouble the water. And what we do because we don't understand how God moves, water represents the spirit. And so when God troubles the water, when we see the water troubling or bubbling, what we'll do is say, okay. But God was stirring up the water because that was the atmosphere that you were supposed to get in to be healed. That was the spot you were supposed to be at for the abundance of supply to manifest. The water's troubled. We see trouble, we run. Yeah. If you understand the scripture, it was good for me that I was afflicted. The Bible says all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. If you arm yourself and prepare yourself, woman of God, the, 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 you got to prepare yourself to know that it's going to be a level of persecution and suffering. Yes. Different people are going to mishandle you. Different people are going to drop you. Different people are going to violate you. That's all part of life. But that's the way. That's the way. That's why the Bible says straight and narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. See, many people, when they dropped lied on, talked about, misunderstood, they quit. This is too hard. People in the world didn't do me like that. The devil in the lie. They talk about you every day. You just think they don't. As soon as you walk out, they're like, look what she had on. She shouldn't even wore that to the club. She looked pitiful. She thinks she's cute. They talk about you all the time. Why is it, I'm coming to an end, why is it that as soon as something don't go our way in the church house, fellowship, unity, the first place we want to leave is the church. Why come we ain't doing that in the club? Right. When people talk about you and waste drinks on your shoes, you know, trying to say, uh, uh, somebody begin to fight and stuff, and they spill some drink on your clothes, and, and, and you know, trying all that, you break your toenail or your, your, your fingernail and all that stuff, you go right back next Sunday or next Saturday. I'm serious. Yeah. Why is it that we'll leave the church so quickly, but yeah. we won't leave the club as quick as we leave the church? Why is it that people can offend us in church and we'll leave the fellowship of the believers? But they can talk about us and lie on us, and we can almost lose our life, my God, because of a shootout at a club, and we'll be right back the following Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as the quarter don't speak to me, I leave the church. You see how much emphasis you put on flesh than spirit? Yeah. <sighs> Close. Yeah. Why is it that we're more excited about going out and hanging out than we are about <sighs> coming together? Right. Because of perfect, I'm, I'm going to close right here. This is what I do know and understand. When you're living a vibrant Christian life, when you are connected to the source, when there's power running through your life, when you've seen woman of God, God move, yes. when you've seen God open up the Red Sea solar, when you've seen God, my God, put it all back together, when you've seen God do the impossible, and when you're walking with God and God is always winking at you, my God, when you're reading your Bible every day and you're seeing, my God, the promises be fulfilled in your natural life, see, it gives you a different type of aroma. Yes, it, does. it gives you a different type of pursuit. I, 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 I'm going to go on record and say the reason why many of us don't have no real pursuit for God because we don't believe that God can. Right, right, right. And we don't believe that God will. Right. We've been suffering so long. We've been going through so much hell for so long. We've been living in poverty and mediocrity for so long. We don't believe that God can. And so when God put people in your life, remember the currency of the kingdom is people, relationship. So when God brings somebody in your life, my God, that's a living testimony that God can, you still won't believe it. Well, you, what you do, you disqualify yourself and say, that was for Sharon. That wasn't for me, though. God loves her more than he loved me. So now you finna relegate God to favoritism. See, you're disqualifying yourself. You can kill it in your mind. You can kill it in your life. Some of y'all don't believe that God can. Some of you believe that's just the way it's going to be. I choose to, be, to believe the opposite. Right. Abundant. Yes. Abundant. As I close, let me give you this. Number three, atmosphere of people are important. That's number three. So I gave you the four signs 
of a dynamic atmosphere and a unified atmosphere, salvation, miracles, restoration, uh, my God, and abundant supply. All the need, needs of people is met. Uh, 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 again, when a person is not seeing the manifestation of the scriptures fulfilled in their life, I promise you ain't nothing wrong with God's word. You got to ask yourself, I got to ask myself, what am I not doing? Because uh, abundant, <laughs> oh my God, abundant, mm, mm, mm. boy, I'm trying to help myself, abundant. He said he would do things according to the power that works in you. But obedience is tied to that power that works in you. Sacrifice is tied to the power that works in you. Flipping those pages is applied to the power that works in you. God said he would do abundantly things, abundantly things for you. He said that you can't even think or imagine. There's things that God has for you, Stacy, that you ain't even begin to imagine. There's things, Sharon, you just scratching the surface. And you didn't, you didn't, you didn't travel. You didn't done a lot of things, woman of God, that you never that you never, ever even factor. If you just look at your life with that man sitting right there, from 2144 and to the things that you have got to experience because of the divine connection with your job and the places, thousand a night hotels, thousand a night, people can't even factor the things that God has blessed you. I'm just trying to build you and I'm trying to bless the people behind you. The things, remember you dealt with rejection. Your mama ran off and left you. You never thought you was good enough. See what I'm trying to say? Look at you today. Look how God took your life because you said yes. I can go on and on with your testimonies about the abundant, and I don't want you to think I'm bragging. Boy, but when I take a look at it, it's real in the field. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm trying to make y'all understand and help y'all understand that God has things in store for you that you can't even begin to imagine. There's things that is happening in my life at 49 years old, so that I never, ever thought. There's things that God has allowed me to do. This scripture, Ephesians 3.20, yeah. has been fulfilled in my very life, and it's been fulfilled in a lot of y'all lives. You just haven't begun to accept it. Some of y'all have, but many of you haven't, because you think that if you ain't got $10,000 in a bank, my God, that God ain't doing nothing for you. You think because you have a little problems in your relationship that God don't love you. You think because your kids are still going crazy. You think that God don't love you. Oh, that's part of life. God got things in store for you, abundantly things in store. God wants you to look good. God wants you to look good. God wants you to look good. So number three, the atmosphere to which people, number three, the atmosphere to which people submit themselves has the power to change and shape their lives. Uh-oh. The atmosphere to which people submit themselves has the power. So if you leave here and you go into an atmosphere and it's like Vietnam, you submit yourself to the atmosphere and show that the atmosphere will change you. Let me make it uh, uh, applicable. The Bible says soon the word of God is sown into your heart. The devil comes to snatch it. So if I'm leaving an atmosphere like this that's set up for unified expectancy and I'm going to my car and I'm going to my home, I'm going to somewhere and it's a bunch of chaos, it's like a, line, a, 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 a minefield. See what you're Everywhere you go, you got the... Because you might step on the explosion. You might step on the explosion. So therefore, you can't even focus on what you just received inside the house with the community of believers. My God, when you leave her, my God, you go into an atmosphere that's changing you and you're not changing it. Oh, my God, I'm talking to my daughter today. Some of us is leaving the fellowship of the brothers and sisters and we're going back to places called life that's robbing us. Our atmosphere is when we leave the 205 South Sheridan. It's not set up. For God to continue to download into us. When we leave 205 South Sheridan, the atmospheres, the environment, the places we're going, it's not set up for the Spirit of God to continue to download revelation and do miracles. And Remember, because God won't come in the atmosphere that's not set up for the Spirit of God to descend. So when you leave here, what's your atmosphere like? So to my people, Brother Boyd, they got to understand. To my men back there, my God, they got to understand. To the atmosphere and their transition home, if the atmosphere is like a landmine, everything they're receiving is just got robbed from. They go back there, number chaos and hell. When you go to your house, ain't number fighting and bickering, enemy just robbed you. You can't even focus on what God is saying. You can't even meditate. 
You trying to sit down and read your notes and he tripping. You trying to sit down and read your notes, she tripping. You trying to read your notes and the key is tripping. The phone is calling, the bill collector's not. You, the atmosphere is just, ah, amen. Thank y'all for agreeing with that. And you're being robbed. Yeah, this is a good Bible study here. I know I went over, this is a good Bible study. I'm trying to help the church because I love the church. My God. And so therefore, the atmosphere that you go back to has the power to shape you. So it's not enough just to come to church on Sunday and Wednesday. That's not going to shape you if your atmosphere is a landmine outside of 205 South Sheridan. So you got to make some decisions about the type of atmosphere when you leave 205, what you going to go home to. What kind of music is in your car? What type of weed you got in your ashtray? What type of alcohol you got in your bar at home? What type of man or woman you got in your bed that ain't your husband? See, that's atmosphere. See what I'm trying to say? So therefore, everything you get in this bitch. So you're happy for the hour you're here, and then you're miserable when you get out of my presence because now you go back to life because you're not letting the atmosphere change. The atmosphere has the power. Let me move because I got to close. The atmosphere that you go to has the power through you to be changed. If you're not walking in any power, you're going home to a land, man, that you have the power to change. God sit up there and tell me, why you won't change that matter? Why you won't call those things to be not as though they are? Why you won't speak into this atmosphere? Why you won't tell the enemy you got, it's a whole lot of place you can go, but you won't be at this one tonight. Why you won't open up your window and do something radical, like say, talk to every demon, my God, stand in your front yard and open up every door, every window, the back door, open up the car door, kick the cat out and say, everything in here got to go. I'm changing the atmosphere. I'm changing the atmosphere tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not going to finish this and I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to finish, I'm going to leave it on. Uh, uh, just remember the atmospheres, atmosphere, my God, uh, you have the power. Atmosphere can change your life. It can shape your life and change your life. There's testimony after testimonies in this church of this atmosphere, classes, encounters, men and women's encounters that I want everybody to get prepared for. You're going to hear me information about that on this Sunday. But the atmosphere, the atmosphere, Tracy, of going on for Christ has affected many people's lives. Remember, the atmosphere has the power to change and shape your life. So if you stay connected to the proper atmosphere, and then when you leave 205 South Sheridan, you got to make some decisions to make sure that your atmosphere is set up for the signs, miracles, and wonders to continue to manifest. See what I'm trying to say? Because if they don't, the atmosphere will change you for the worse and not for the best. And let me read this last one. I'm going to get out of here. Atmospheres can be magnetic. Uh, it's like a magnet. Uh, when people are in, when, when people are in, in or under a particular atmosphere, they become the they become the certain kind of people. They become a certain kind of people. When people are up under, are in a certain type of atmosphere, you can't help but become like the people that's in the atmosphere. So ain't nothing wrong with sounding like pastor people sometimes. When you're outside of 205 South Sheridan, ain't nothing wrong, my God, with roaring like a lion Ain't nothing wrong with being meek like Pastor Matt. Ain't nothing wrong. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. See, some of y'all disqualify yourself because you feel like, I don't want to be like Janice. Don't nobody want to be an a, 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 a imitator of what's good, but we go imitate what's bad. Look how many of us conform to the life that we come out of. We make sure we got the right outfit. We make sure that we join the, the right type of gangs in the environment. See, we, we easily become like the, out, out, the, the environment of the world, but we have a problem with becoming like the environment of the church. And to some of our, and to some of, I'm, I'm going to take some up off of us, because when you look around certain atmospheres in certain churches, the people ain't people you want to be like no way. Because they one way in her, but when they leave out her, it's another way. And so you got to understand, my God, it's okay. It's okay. So if I'm a lion, I need to learn how to be a lamb, then I need to be around people in this atmosphere that's going to teach me how to be a lamb. And if I'm too much of a lamb, too passive, then I need to get around some men that roar sometimes. Because I promise you, let me close the book. Because I promise you, every real woman up off of her, uh, they want to know that when they walk in society, in the mall or wherever, that they got a lion that's going to protect them. I can't get no better. You can be quiet and loop. You can be quiet and, and real chilly chill all you want to, but I promise you, uh, so, these women need a, uh, somebody got a roar around her. 
Somebody got to know that if you put your hands on me, my, my line ain't finna get off. We finna set it off up in here, dog, dog. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It's okay to be quiet. It's okay to be meek, but you better roar when you need to roar, man. Don't nobody want to follow and submit to no weak man. Oh, my God, but atmosphere, become like the atmosphere. It's okay to adopt some of the customs and the patterns that y'all seen, especially in this young pastor that y'all submit to and follow, and many of you has benefited greatly from coming into this life. Amen, amen, amen. From coming and being connected, so quit trying to disassociate yourself with Christians, but you don't have no problem with associating yourself with non-Christians. Heaven is closed. You know why? Because what you're doing, you're doing like Paul when he rebuked Peter. He said, when the Jews is around, you act like a Jew. But when you go hang around the Gentiles, see what I'm trying to say? You want to become like a Gentile. But when your Jewish brothers come around, you disassociate yourself from the Gentiles. Paul called Peter. He said, you're a hypocrite. Yeah. Paul told the, the chief cornerstone. Oh, my God, I mean the rock. You're a hypocrite. When you're with the Jews, it's all God. Then when the Jews ain't around, you hang out the Gentiles, it's Gentiles. But when you see one of your Jewish brothers, you disassociate yourself from the Gentile. Because Jews and Gentiles didn't get along. And so Paul said, you can't operate like that. That's hypocrisy. Some of us is like that. When we want to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, we want to be around the Christians. We see Sharon them in the mall or Madeline in the mall. Hi, Matt. Ah, we just make, we let them walk, walk on back because we don't want nobody to, girl, you, where you know her from? Oh, that's Pastor Matt. You go to church? When you start going to church? You got to change that atmosphere. Remember, atmosphere has everything to do with signs, miracles, and wonders. When the atmosphere is right, you posture yourself and position yourself to receive supernatural blessings, supernatural favor. Doors begin to open. Opportunities that you never thought, Sharon, that you would have, I would have, comes to you. Ephesians 3.20. Some of you need to remember that. God got things in store for you. Abundant of blessings ready for you. You single women, don't compromise. Keep yourself. Many of you have been married and you've been divorced and you're ready for God to bring you your marriage, your husband. But you got to say, okay, am I preparing myself for my husband so I don't make the mistakes I did the last time? And it might not be your fault. You might have just, he might have just been somebody that just didn't know how to handle you. And so he pushed. Okay, I understand that. So posture yourself. Make sure your atmosphere, single women, is inviting to what you believe in God for. Make sure you are attracting what you want. Because you can see it, but if your life don't match it, then you disqualify yourself. You know what all you know what type of man you want. I'm talking to my single women because there's a lot of them in her. You know what you want. You got an image of what you want, but you got to ask yourself, am I that though? You want him to be all like this, but what are you? You want him to be, you want him to read his Bible and pray, but do you read your Bible and pray? Atmosphere. Atmosphere is powerful. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Yes, I went over, but I love the people, man. Everything that I try to do is, is to, to bring honor to God's name by helping you be what you and I need to be so that we can bless God's kingdom here on earth. Please don't misunderstand what going on for Christ is about. Going on for Christ like all churches should be, it's a deliverance ministry. And in this deliverance ministry, there is discipleship vision that we have in place. Discipleship teach you how to walk Christ. Going to church teach you how to talk Christ. See what I'm to say? And so therefore, that's why it's different. That's why the atmosphere is different. That's why you don't see a whole lot of worrying back preaching and all that because God didn't call me to be that. God called me to teach the gospel and deal with the people's root system. So the healthier you can get because guess what? Root system, root system has everything to do with atmosphere. Root system is below. And so therefore, what's underground will manifest external if it's healthy. And if it's unhealthy, guess what's manifesting external? Unhealthiness. And so God deals with the root system through discipleship. 
Yes, the atmosphere at times can seem hard. Yes, at times, my God, what you experience in life, my God, seems like it ain't going to get no better. You know why? Because there's a lot of warfare around this church because the devil don't want you to obtain or reach your destiny. He showed them want your confidence to go up. He showed them want your self-esteem to go up. He showed them want you to begin to think like a king and a queen that you are. He showed them want you to receive that you are one fearfully and wonderfully made. He showed them want you to understand that you are created in God's image, my God. He showed them want you to understand, talking about the devil, my God, that God gave you dominion over the earth and the, and the stuff that's on top of you, you're supposed to be on top of it. See, the devil don't want you to understand all that. As long as you're jumping and shouting and running around but you ain't got no power, my God, the devil is winning. Oh, my God, but when you come to your full saving knowledge, my God, that God requires that I live something, then you become a threat to the enemy. When your atmosphere outside the 205 South Sheridan start affecting people's lives and people start taking notice of your life, my God, then you know, my God, you are arriving. You are, you are becoming because none of us has arrived. Don't never let Matthew 5 and 6 leave your mindset. Matthew 5 and 6 is blessed is the man who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. When you stop hungering, you start backsliding. When you stop hungering after righteousness, you start living any kind of way. When you stop hungering after righteousness, you start compromise. When you stop hungering after truth and righteousness, you start fellowshipping with darkness instead of light. When you stop hungering after righteousness, you want to disconnect from people that's going to add to you. You want to get away from people that's going to challenge you and hold you accountable. That's what happens when you stop hungering after righteousness.